so we're we're dealing with the pandemic. We've been dealing with, uh, you know, for the last twenty years, our, we're we're losing our civil liberties. And let's listen to what Tony Blair has to say. One of the people that participated in convincing his own country to get involved in the Iraq War. What other good ideas did this fella have? We create the digital ID today that is much more easily protected so you can deal with a lot of the privacy and surveillance issues that worry people but it's a it's a natural evolution of the way that we're going to use technology in any event to transact daily life and this covid crisis gives an additional reason for doing that because look i, I could be wrong about this but when i look at for example how you restart some businesses how you restart international travel i think people's disease status for example, have they been tested? What is the result of that test? Um, have they had the disease? Do they have the disease? I think unless you're able to record some of this data in a way that people can use, it's going to be difficult to, to go back to anything like a, 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 a near normal in things like, like, like transport. So hmm. if you're going to start international travel again, how do you do that unless people can be easily tested and have some record of that test? Okay. So here he is, a proponent of that digital ID. Thoughts on it? Something people were called a conspiracy theorist for even mentioning. Well, the first thing I want to mention is that Bill Gates actually funds the Tony Blair Foundation. So he's just part of this network, which basically all comes back to Bill Gates, someone who has a, a vision for society, which includes that kind of technology which tony blair just described and you know steph it's pretty disturbing this this weekend in davos the world health organization they're meeting to discuss the the potential uh, adaptation of what they're calling a world pandemic treaty basically to supersede all national governments, all sovereign states, and place them under the control of the World Health Organization, which is heavily backed by Bill Gates. I think after the United States, uh, he's one of the top funders, China, Bill Gates, and the United States. Those are the top funders of the World Health Organization. He's not a nation, but somehow he gets to put his money behind this group. And now they're talking about, yes, creating a treaty that would allow for the coordination of all pandemic response, allow for the coordination of transportation policy within between states. Again, we as citizens of sovereign states and governments would don't have any ability to elect the people at the World Health Organization. We don't even know most of their faces or who they are. And yet they would be responsible for crafting a global policy on the pandemic, controlling, yes, who can get on a plane and how they can track you, uh, what what they're going to require. It's really deeply disturbing. And I don't hear anybody talking about this, unfortunately, other than and people on the right mostly and, and people on right wing corporate media using their platforms to talk about this. I think everyone should be outraged. The left should see it as a violation of sovereignty, a basic principle that we stand for body uh, sovereignty, but also the sovereignty of states to craft their own policy. Look at uh, the way that different countries responded to the coronavirus pandemic under this type of treaty, a country like Sweden wouldn't have had the ability to do their own way of dealing with the implement their own policy dealing with the pandemic where now because they went through herd immunity they have less hospitalizations and fewer deaths right now i should say fewer hospitalizations and deaths than countries such as israel which and i don't know if they've had four or five vaccines in in, in israel now so it's healthy for countries to be able to craft their own policy and this agenda that they're putting forward at the world health organization is is crazy the last thing i'll say steph is that you can find this on on Max Blumenthal's Twitter, but there was recently uh, last year they actually did a simulation at the Munich Security Conference, which you know that's where people go to interview giants such as uh, Madeleine Albright and mm -hmm. Francis Fukuyama, oh, right. give them glowing interviews. Yeah, so at that conference they actually did a simulation of a global pandemic. Guess what it happened to be? Monkeypox. Oh. 
or a pox. I'm sorry, a pox. And now at the same time that they're discussing this treaty, we're ex experiencing a pox outbreak that is now in the media kind of starting to get discussed the way COVID was in the early days. And so people should just be aware. And of course, Gates funded that uh, that simulation. So it's almost like we're living in, I've, I've, I feel crazy describing this reality to you, but that's the reality we're living in. And I feel like we have to talk about it as much as we can because we have to stop this. I know it's pie in the sky when we talk about the World Health Organization, that their priority actually should be peace, because I would think if that pri that was their priority, that would probably be saving millions of lives, you know, as I like a that, Steph. Right. The World Health Organization yeah. should be pro peace. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anya, I really appreciate your time. Um, we will have you back next Friday if you're in town because I'm in town. All right. And I will see you soon. And thanks for stopping by. Anytime, Steph. Take care. Bye. Bye. Jimmy. Hey, I'm on tour. Come see me in Irvine, California, Las Vegas, Indianapolis, Salt Lake City, Washington, Washington. You mean Washington State? Yes. Yes. Go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.